Kiri Mviri, welcome, welcome to Bumplay Kenya. Asante, asante. Merci. Uh, yes sir, yes sir. Uh, as, uh, back in Ghana, we say merci. <laughs> <laughs> it's not so. It's yeah. not so. We are criminalized by the French now. Because <laughs> <laughs> you said Asante, you had to take one for the table. What a link up. Uh, yeah. You know, Mviri definitely one of the uh, budding artists in Kenya, making major moves internationally, and of course, you know, Kidi from the same uh, type of cloth, I'd say, up there representing in Ghana. Um, maybe we should just start by, you know, speaking on your individual style and skill. I mean, Kidi especially, like, even for the 2021 uh, highlight song of the year, yeah. um, you are able to, to scoop that. Yeah. Maybe you could, you could speak on us and school us a little bit on High Life and what okay. it means. Okay, so High Life is um, a sound originating from Ghana. It involves various percussions, predominantly guitar strings, you know. Um, and over the years, High Life has evolved, you know, from the era of, we have, you might not know the people I'm mentioning, some of the people I'm mentioning, but they are legends in my country. Mm -hmm. From Dr. Pabombo, it evolves to the Dabi Lumbes, to the Furian Consens, to, uh, to even us, the new school of artists, the High Life has kept evolving. And every Afrobeat song worldwide, there is high life in it. Every Afrobeat song that has it's been big worldwide has high life influences. So high life birthed the Afrobeat. So that's like the source, the parent plant. Mm -hmm. It's a very amazing genre. Like I said, I personally I'm a sucker for guitars. And high life has been all about the guitars and the percussion movements and mm -hmm. the shakers and all of that. So mm -hmm. it's a very important part of Ghanaian music culture. Yeah. And I take inspiration from that. Even in my some of the high life songs I've made and even my Afrobeat songs also take inspiration from the high life music. So mm -hmm. it's a very, very important part of music making in Ghana. Yeah. yeah. And the guitar is something that's also very dominant in your sound and theory. Mm -hmm. um, now coined as Safar and B, is that official? Safar and B. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it in, yeah. Yes, yeah. One day when the genre is big, remember that. <laughs> Kiddy coined Safar and B. Yeah. So do you find any connection with that, with, with, with that um, description of high life, especially with the guitar? Um, not necessarily. I, I was very intentional with what I was doing first. It had to... Um, I always uh, first start off my music with just the guitar. I learned the guitar specifically because of songwriting. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, even coming up with the song, mine was more of exploring their sound. I just wanted to push them to the limit and see what they can do with this. Mm -hmm. But uh, fair enough, well, you see what happened. That's dope. Now, Nviri, you're also a very celebrated songwriter. Um, you know, you are able to, to coin some major hits even before you had your big break as a, as a performing artist. Yeah. What do you do to, to keep your pen sharp? Well, I mean, uh, I write a lot. Okay. Not necessarily for release, but for my own release, like just to vent out, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, I value writing more than anything else. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, we, I just stick to the basics where I practice makes perfect. Mm -hmm. I've gotten to points where <clears throat> I've done a song today, and then probably two weeks later I want to change it. And it so happens that I was absorbed into a group or rather a culture of songwriters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we have sound so we have been sold yeah. It's no playing ground where you, when you step up, you have to step up, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it kind of just motivated us and pushed us to become better versions of ourselves. Now, something that we haven't seen a lot of in, in Africa, you know, in the entertainment business is really artists coming together. Um, it's, it's, it's happened in, in ISO, like, but there hasn't been a, like a concerted effort to really put mm -hmm. the industries together, west, south, east. Yeah. Um, where do you guys stand on that with your generation of, of artists? Do you have that vision of, you know, um, being able to tour 50 countries in Africa or even 30? Like, uh, are there any plans or, or intentions of, of that kind of energy? Do you feel it? Um, I personally do, because I keep saying that no matter how exciting an artist is, at a point, people are excited about collaborations. Collaborations are one of the major ways of getting into somebody's market, somebody getting into your market. Take an example, I, I, if Mike Jackson were to be alive, right? 
as big as he is, Michael Jackson, he's about to drop a new album. People have heard Michael Jackson for years. Mm -hmm. The one thing that people get excited about on Michael Jackson's new project would be who he's collaborating with, who he's singing with, who he's rapping with. So we understand that no matter how big an artist, no matter how celebrated you are, collaborations are important. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just about it opens your mind to a new culture, a new sound, new you know influence. So mm -hmm. it's good to not just stay in your bubble, but go out there and then have like a show or a song with some other artist who has like a different sound, different background. So it's a very important part of music making. Sure. DJ, take us away. <laughs> <laughs> DJ, track number three. <laughs> yes, I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling for you. Look at me falling, I'm falling, I'm falling. I'm falling. I'm falling. Pick up the phone, I'm calling. Mm -hmm. See the trouble you be causing. Uh. I'm at your door and I'm breaking it down. That's Ooh. what's up. <laughs> Go check out the new song, man. Falling yeah. by Reef, featuring your truly the sugar daddy golden boy from Ghana. Like, yeah. boom. <laughs>